On this week's episode of The Video Store, we cover falcons in peanut butter, Frank gets an Ali Wang for Ali Wong, and Honey Badgers! What the fuck is an Ali Wang? <laughs> Hey, hello, welcome to the Video Store Podcast. Every week we review movies, TV shows, and some other things that we've watched and look ahead at what's streaming, on demand, out for rental, and in theaters. My name's Frank. And my name's Josh. Hey, Josh. Hey, Uh, Frank. (laughs) Let's uh, start this awkward podcast with some thoughts and trailers. Mm. Up first is a film called Quiet and Slim. It's going to be out. Queen. Queen. Shit. Slim. I keep doing Fucking that. Fucking asshole. Start. I swear to God, you need to start this whole thing. No, people need to know that I can't get this title right. Um, Queen and Slim. It's going to be out in November this year. And it's about a couple's first date that takes an unexpected turn when a police officer pulls them over. Um, looks like we're dealing with biracial couples and some people's intolerance. It's got Chloe, Chloe Savini, who's, you know, I guess coming back. It's good to see her back. For me, anyway, after uh, her role in Dead Don't Die, and now this. And also mm-hmm. Daniel Kalua, who's an actor that um, piques my interest. Like, whenever yeah, he's in something. Awesome. Yeah, he's almost on the list of, like, I'll watch things just because he's in it. But mm-hmm. he hasn't really gotten a lot of starring roles since Get Out. He's just been killing it in supporting roles. What are you talking Well, yeah, it's true. He's, uh, that, I would agree on that front. But he's really good complimentary uh, person for a lot of these other uh, strong movies like Widows and things like that. So Yeah. Also, always good to see Bokeem Wilbine. I don't know if you're a fan, but I am. Uh, I don't know that name. Okay. He's like a, a early 90s actor, character actor. Really cool huh. guy. Um, it's directed by Melina... Matsukis, who uh, did a lot of the Insecure episodes on HBO, some Master and None, and some music videos. I think it's one of her uh, first or early feature films. Looks interesting. Mm, yeah, uh, I definitely like the spin and take, and it just uh, it looks a little captivating. So I could be down for that. Boom! Big words. Boom. That's why Boom. we have you here. Um, the Peanut Butter Falcon is a pretty interesting title. Um, I know. (laughs) This one's going to be out August 9th, so pretty soon. Um, Directed by Tyler Nelson and Michael Schwartz, and also co-written by them. This uh, is about a character named Zach who runs away from his care home to make his dream of becoming a wrestler come true. That sounds interesting. Also, the uh, the lead cast of Shia LaBeouf, my boy, coming back with Dakota Johnson. I know, um, right? Someone who's like, these are people on two different paths of stardom. She is like rising up and he's, he's been missed. You know, it's been a while. I, I would have thought this guy would have been, been rapping, dude. He's really good. Yeah. Dude, there's a point where I thought Shia LaBeouf was going to be like that the generation. Phoenix? No, not like Tom Hanks, dude. Like he was getting all those really? roles. Yeah. Really? For sure. After Transformers and like, what was that uh, uh, rear window ripoff he did? Um, um, suburbia or something or oh suburbia yeah. yeah yeah that was shitty though that was garbage but he made it interesting like, he could carry a movie I thought he I was guess. just like I thought that movie sucked I thought he was just there's something about him he had that likability um, and then that Indiana Jones movie fucking sucked and it was probably part of why he's not a household name yeah yeah I, I agree that he was prefers a household name but I wouldn't have said the quality of Tom Hanks I just. It's only a few people that make the Hanks list for me. But this looks very interesting. Um, I think it's very uh, unique and different to have a lead role played by somebody that has um, some disabilities. So I think that's really cool. And I think it really um, adds to the uh, the sincerity of what they're trying to do and not just exploit uh, people with the, with uh, these conditions. And I think um, I'm a big fan of Peanut Butter and Falcon, so... I'm pretty cool with this. Yeah, hell of a name. I hope that's his wrestling name. It uh, is. Uh, cool. You didn't see the trailer? I don't want it looked good. As soon as if I read the description, I've told you this, I'm like, I want to watch this movie. I don't yes. watch the trailer. Like the Okay, dist- well, spoiler alert, that's his fucking wrestler name. <laughs> Between the, the plot summary and the cast, I'm like, I'm gonna watch this. I don't care. It's I mean, I'm so interested to see what Shia LaBeouf does in this that I'm gonna watch it even if I hear it's terrible. Okay, fair yeah. enough, fine. 
Um, tell me about this film, Burn, that's going to be out in August, because IMDb doesn't really have a description of it. It's written and directed by Michael Gann, um, stars some people that I've never heard of. You There's a couple Josh people you Hutcherson know. In you don't know Josh Hutcherson? I know him, yeah. He's a familiar name and face. But okay. um, you put this on the list. Why, why are you excited about this one? Um, the girl that plays the main actress, who I'm not familiar with, I guess her name is Tilda Copham Hervey, just adds a very unique and um, odd sense to this role of somebody. It, it's, it's pretty disturbing. So it seems as if uh, it's a centered around a gas station and um, her ability uh, to just try and please everyone or something of that effect. And just being an overall nice person in people's doormats where uh, people take advantage of that. But it turns out she may be a little bit more sinister than led on to believe. Um, it's it's hard to explain what happens in that trailer, but I'd say there's a lot of different elements they're throwing into the same game. Um, a little bit of uh, straw dogs, a little bit of... Uh, there's a lot of different elements that it's not just uh, some people come and attack the gas station or it's... Uh, it's not just that the gas station gets robbed. There's some weird stuff going on in this movie, and I'd really like to see these uh, little cut shots that have been put in this trailer and how they develop in this actual storyline. So that was kind of where I was at. And Josh Hutcherson, if you don't know him from Future Man, uh, which is such a great show, um, go check that out as well. It's on Amazon. But, uh, yeah, just uh, just peculiar, a little interesting, something a little different. Dope. Yeah, Poop. sounds good. Sounds good. Um, at the, the soonest of these, out real soon, in a couple weeks, we'll be talking about it again, is Point Blank. It's going to be out July 12th on Netflix. Um, plot summary. To save his pregnant wife, an emergency room nurse teams up with an injured murder suspect in a race against time. Rival a nurse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's a nurse. Uh, he's a nurse. A nurse. Um, yeah, so they're uh, going up against time, rival criminals, and renegade cops. This is directed by Joe Lynch, um, who I believe did Mayhem that I like. Yeah, he, he directed Mayhem, Chillerama. Um, he's really good at exploited films and like ultra violence. And it's got your boy, Frank Grillo, as well. Frank right? Grillo. Anthony Mackie in there. So that's a good team up. Striking Vipers. I assume you're probably going to watch this. You know, the week it debuts, if not uh, sooner. Pro- <laughs> I will watch it. Mm-hmm. I am a gr- uh, Grillo man. Uh, I like me to use my Grillo pads to clean things. <laughs> Snap. Um, yeah, it seems interesting, and I would like to see what Anthony Mackey does after fucking dudes in video games. Spoiler. Yeah. I like that episode. I, I did. I only watched that one episode so far of um, Black Mirror, but I thought it was really good. Uh, they're all, all three of them were decent. I mean, it's they're they're decent. I would definitely go watch the other two. Dope. All right, um, that's it for thoughts and trailers. Let's smoothly transition to what we watch. Um, Ruin smoothness. Do it, Josh. Ruin yeah. it. <laughs> you did it. Um, the first part of this is going to be like a nice Ali Wong block of things. Um, so last week I talked about Always Be My Maybe. I thought it was a pretty good romantic comedy. And, you know, I really enjoyed the chemistry between Randall Park and Ali Wong, who's someone I've heard of, but Mm -hmm. really unfamiliar with her work. So I back to back a couple days ago, watched her two Netflix specials, Hard Knock Wife, which Mm -hmm. is the newer one, and Baby Cobra, which was her debut. And they're really fucking good. I like her a lot. Like, I have definitely have like a crush on Ali Wong. I think she's hysterical. And just like her facial expressions, like what I the takeaway from these stand up specials was that they could have even used her more in that movie. Like she could be like a romantic. Did they comedy toned star. her down in a sense? Yeah, they kind of just gave her a generic role. Like they didn't let they didn't play to her strengths because like her storytelling and her facial expressions and different voices and mannerisms is top notch. Um, okay. And I'm a you know we're both big fans of stand up and. She has the confidence that all headliners have. Like, when she's up there, she's just firing away. Slaying. But, yeah, like, her body language, facial expressions, and, and style and, like, voices, like, really add to the story. So if you're a fan of stand-up and you're like me and you're, you're late to the game on Ali Wong, check both these out. They're about an hour apiece. Uh, I would go in uh, chronological order because she does follow up with stories about her husband. And there's, uh, you know, different themes that overlap in both specials. 
Very, very interesting. Uh, yeah, I have not watched them either, so that is something maybe I'll have to check out my filler time. Uh, and as you gave a review of Always Be My Maybe and with Keanu Reeves and all that, I was like, I need to see that. So I did watch it, and the movie uh, was pleasantly surprising in a better sense of just um, giving a shit about their characters and and providing a, a decent story well enough for uh, Randall and, and Allie to just kind of make this movie uh enjoyable so keanu reeves was great and i didn't realize at first that he was playing himself well and i'm saying when you talked about it i did not mm-hmm. realize that he was playing himself so when he turned out to be doing that i was just like that's fucking great <laughs> um so yeah everything about him being in that movie was so perfect but uh otherwise i think they did do a decent job of being sincere and genuine with that. So um, I dug it, you know, so it was a little heart warmer there. Awesome. So that's two for two recommendations for us on that one. So if you're looking for like a light watch, always be my maybe good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Um, Told my mom about it. Oh yeah. Mm. I was like, mom, you would like this. I can't wait to see. Um, you know, I want to hear what she thought of it for sure. Yeah, we'll have to get her in third party as in like special guest review of fucking that movie. Yeah. Um, so weird week for me. I have a lot of rewatches and some interesting things. I watched a Honey Badger documentary. Um, it was a case where like we like Honey Badger. We didn't want to like watch a whole movie, but there was a fifty-five minute Honey Badgers Masters of Mayhem on Amazon Prime. Um, it's listed as an individual film on like Letterbox. I think it's a part of like a series, probably from the Nature Channel or something. But you can find it on Prime um, Solo, and it's a good time, man. Like I remember the Honey Badger memes from like five, six years ago, and I think documentaries like this inspired that. Uh, yeah, it's really it just follows a couple in the wild. There's a guy who like stalks them. He's obsessed with honey badgers, and then another gentleman who has like a sanctuary uh, with a bunch of different animals, and he just tries to go through all these ways to keep because he like rescues animals, rehabilitates them, then lets them out in the wild. And like you could make a movie based on the antics of this one honey badger who's like a fucking escape artist. And not only does he escape, he goes I into think the they did Frank. He goes into this guy's house and like tries to kill him like every time. <laughs> like he gets out of a sanctuary and then breaks into the dude's house <laughs> while he's sleeping in the middle of the night either to be like I'm going to kill you or like fuck you I got out. <laughs> like it's hysterical. Um Yeah, because murder by animal is hilarious. I mean, if you're on the animal side, this guy's captive. You know, he, he's got him captive. So, um, is it captive though? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I've been watching a lot of uh, um, Planet Earth as well. So, big fan of the nature docs. Like, fresh turned into a hippie. We're gonna be vegan next week, Frank. For sure. But uh, I mean, you know, it's a good thing if you're just getting high, chilling out. Um, just kind of want an easy watch. Recommending nature docs and specifically Honey Badgers, Masters of Mayhem. And where was that? On Prime? Amazon Prime. Prime. Well, okay. And I just wanted to talk about something I came across on Netflix that is odd to me. And I would like to know if you probably haven't seen any of this, but I really want to know what the general consensus is of people that do watch this and are they enjoying it. So uh, what I'm talking about, they have these game shows on Netflix that are built to be streamed on Netflix. It's not... Uh, like a CBS or something like that where they're like, you know, they're during this commercial break, but they do commercial breaks to separate, but there's no fucking commercial. So that's always weird. That is weird. <clears throat> they're like, and we'll be right back from what? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I found that kind of interesting and especially on the one ep- uh, show where at the end, the guy's like, you can watch the next episode in five, four, three. And I'm like, all right, this is getting a little creepy. Maybe they're trying to give you something that, like, you for people that are like, I I want to watch stuff on Netflix, but I also like to do laundry in between or something. Maybe they're like they're they're testing like giving you stuff that has breaks. I don't know. So, and I looked up all game shows on Netflix because I wanted to see what else they put on there and if there was other stuff like this. So, there's two shows that I found that are similar, and these these two shows called Awake and Flinch. Flinch, I saw uh, a, one episode of. And it just started to remind me of like being too close to Al my balls from <laughs> yeah, and uh, where they just kind of partially torture people in in minimalistic ways or, or embarrass them uh, by doing you know 
terrible things that make them flinch. Uh, and then if you flinch, you get either electrocuted or dunked in a tank or some other weird shit or something terrible. Um, and then all the people in the crowd are just like, oh, that's great. That's awesome. You know, just the way they have them cheer for this is so awkward. Uh, the show was kind of off putting. And I tried to look at a couple episodes of it. And it was just too close to something that. I really hope is not the future of television for us and, and people going, Oh, this is enjoyable. Let's watch these five dopes just embarrass the shit out of themselves or in, uh, in doing really, really dumb things. Um, that's not even, doesn't look fun. It's just like torturing people and people are like, Oh, that's hilarious. I'm like, "Mm." so this is a double. Don't do it for awake and flinch. Uh, well, hang on. Just hang on. Mm -hmm. Just hang on. Maybe. I'm still on this topic. It's got to go on for a minute. Um, so then I watched The Awake Show, which wasn't terrible, but the game show host reminded me so much of the guy from the 10 Million Merits Black Mirror episode that was the game show dude that was like, oh, that's a cute chick. Let me turn you into my porn star and shit like that. That mm-hmm. I don't know if you may remember that, but yeah. th- this guy was just very – Right off the bat, like, there's a guy that has, like, muscles. It's a contestant. Oh, well, we know Brad over here can just go crush a can. And just saying, like, really generic game show quippy things that it was just it, – it was kind of odd. So the Awake Show, they keep you awake counting quarters for 24 hours. And then based on that, it, it's very weird how they present how you can win because they're like, you could win a million dollars, but you actually can't based on the first thing that you do before anything else in this show. Hmm. Um, you count all these quarters and if you're not within $25 of, of the amount that you say you counted, so it's somewhere between people will count somewhere between like 20 and $30,000 over 24 hours and quarters, oh my which God. is, a, I know it's crazy. Uh, but the person that counted the least amount gets eliminated immediately, which drives you to actually want to count a lot of quarters. So you don't just get kept awake and then count the quarters and then go home. Um, but if you don't pick a number within twenty five dollars of your uh, uh, of what you counted, you don't even have a possibility of winning the million dollars. So the ba- first decision you make before you go through all of this other shit, like uh, some, see who can hit themselves in the face with an egg tied to their face the quickest, and they'll be like, so reaction times are brought down when you have a lack of sleep. Yeah. So to demonstrate that, we're going to watch these people crush eggs on their face there it's just it's really odd and um i'm not a big fan of this format of television and i don't think it's great I'm, it seems like a guilty pleasure almost mm-hmm. but uh it's it's kind of disappointing in in some of that and then i looked at the other game shows they have they have one called like minute to win it which is not terrible it's you know a bunch of silly tasks that you have to do in in a minute and then you know you move up the ladder or whatever shit so i would prefer more of the fun game show to continue and if we could get further away from torturing people and finding that entertaining uh or embarrassing you know just really stuff that seems really low low bar um as I said, we're getting to that out of my balls, and I really think we shouldn't go there as a as a human race. Yeah, I don't want to see people suffer, you know. <clears throat> and then it's just like it's not funny. I don't know. So it's interesting that that stuff's out there, and I guess there's some people that dig it. Um, I would say between the two, if you're going to watch some weird-ass game show, Awake is not that terrible, but that game show host, dude. He's some kind of fucking you, you got to watch episode, the first one just to see, like, how this dude acts as a person. There's also a show out there on Netflix game show with fucking Donald Faison. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Sure. Called uh, which. Yeah, exactly. For, uh, and um, it's it, that show's weird with their prizes. It's called like Win Sanity. And he's like, we're back for Win Sanity. Yeah, it's hilarious. Some of the shit. And um in that show, the audience also wins prizes. So it's like they'll be like, "We're giving away five thousand dollars in lobster dinners," but you get one lobster dinner with like two hundred bucks, and everybody in like t- like twenty people in the audience do, and it'll be like, "All right, now we're gonna give out eight thousand dollars of Beats headphones," and but you only get one pair, and mm-hmm. then a bunch of audience people get a pair. So that's kind of the concept of that show. But like, 
It's like, that's great. You're giving away, like, they're saying, we're giving away $10,000 in chopsticks. You know, it's but just, one person's doing all the work and the audience is, yeah. Right. It's, exactly. just, it's all to get the audience fired up. Uh, pretty much. So an- another weird show. We're back and you can be wind sanded. You know, it's just some weird shit, but you should definitely watch one episode of each just to be like, wow, that yeah. exists. Yeah, like a little sampler, an appetizer of what they have. Interesting. Um, as always, you can just get high and watch Jeopardy on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Way more informative and knowledgeable. But I just mm-hmm. wanted to know where the world was going in the format of game shows. So, yeah. You know? Hit Josh up. Still. Yeah. We'll, we'll try to interact on that one. Um, I got some rewatches in mind, including I checked out Isle of Dogs once again. It's on HBO. The Wes Anderson stop motion film set in Japan about a boy's odyssey to search for his lost dog on the Isle of Dogs. Did you see this one, Josh? No. Really good, really. Um, just all the things that make Wes Anderson movies great. The dry humor, the details, um, the collection of amazing actors. You have dogs voiced by, you know, Brian Cranston, Ed Norton, Jeff Goldblum, Bill Murray, amongst mm. others. Um, just a really nice movie. And if you love dogs, which I hope most of our audience does, you'll really dig this movie. It's just a sweet story. And uh, one of my favorites from 2018. That's on HBO, and it's an employee pick. Um, so I didn't see Child's Play, but I have a replacement for that. Did you see Child's Play? I did. Okay, go ahead. Why I was unsure yeah. what has happened. Tell me if I should see it, because I missed it, and watched something on Netflix instead. Oh, well, um, are you ready? Yeah. I'm building it. Yeah, go for it. Are you, are you sure you're ready? Yes, please. Uh, okay, I'm going to give it to you. It was pretty good, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Not worth the build up. Um, um, I would say I am happy that they chose a different direction than the original movie, which I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize I, that they weren't going to go with the uh, serial murderer uh, soul spirit inside the body of a plaything. Um and I was really surprised that they took more of a kind of a black mirror approach, I would say, with technology just learning and becoming defective and AI evolving to a format to where it decides to do murderous things. Uh, I think the kid that played Andy was fantastic. I think Aubrey Plaza was fantastic. There was really um, nothing I could find that really made me hate the movie. So uh, it wasn't super terrifying either at points, but I just... I think it was very well done uh, for something that, again, probably lower expectations to it. Thought they were going to do a remake similar to the original, and they took a bit of a different direction that I think allows them um, a much different path. And I could see additional movies coming out for sure. Cool, man. Yeah, I need to check it out before Leaf Theaters. And if you like what Josh said, you should do that too. Because it, as far as uh, my town is, like it's in the smallest theater at AMC. Mm. And it's only been in that small theater so far. So it's not going to last long, unfortunately. Hmm. What I watched instead of that um, was a film called Slow West. Have you seen this one? No. It's right. it's an American Western about a young Scottish man who travels across America in pursuit of the woman he loves, attracting the attention of an outlaw who is willing to serve as a guide. Um, the outlaw is played by your boy, Michael Fassbender. Um, the main character is uh, this Cody Smith McPhee who looks like a younger, nerdier Jay Baruchel, and it's a really nice. That's a hard one to pull off. Yeah, for sure. He's like he's definitely like the new Baruchel. If you look him up, you would you get what I'm Joe saying. Two sixty nine. It's awesome. Um, but I like it. It's a different type of western. You, you have you know the you know this character Michael Fassbender who's like not the best person, and his intentions are probably not pure. But it's uh, got really good drama. There's a good bond between the two leads. It's a, it's a good love story. It gives you a little bit of almost every genre with, you know, action western, a little bit of adventure, some drama, and some romance. It's only 90 minutes, which a lot of times I say that because a lot of times I look up movies and it's like two hours and 10 minutes, 90 minutes, and that's like a tiebreaker for me. Because I was going to watch, watch Hostiles, which is another western with uh, Christian Bale, but I was like, I don't know if it's worth the extra 45 minutes. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. But Slow West, um, it's also put out from A24. So once again, A24, you know, putting out great indie stuff. And uh, this is an employee pick for me. I think it's a, a fun watch, um, really well done, and you know, might even break your heart a little bit at the end. 
You're going to break your heart, Frank. You're going to break your heart. Um, going to break my heart. Now, I'll call this a rewatch, but I had barely, like, no memory of that thing you do. And I was Sounds. surfing. iTunes does, like, this special. Every week they sell movies for five bucks, which is basically what it costs to rent them. And, mm-hmm. I, was, and I was like, all right. Like, you know, I, I'm, I people talk about this movie so much. I have, like, hardly any memory of it. I think I've just caught it in bits on TV. I'm going to check it out. Um, it's about a local Pennsylvania band that scores a one-hit wonder in 1964 and rides the star-making machinery as long as they can with the help of its manager, played by Tom Hanks. This film is written and directed by Tom Hanks. And has um, you know a young Liv Tyler in there, a very young Charlize Theron, Ethan, Ethan and, and Embry. Yeah, and you got like you got the late nineties fucking powerhouse of Ethan Embry, Steve Zahn, Tom Everett Scott in the band. Um, also, Giovanni Rabishi is in there for a little bit. I do love the Bishi, yeah. and I wish he would get. What happened? I feel like he was destined for greater things and he's got that show though he's got a show i know probably. but i heard that show sucks it does, it does suck. or whatever. yeah it does suck sneaky Pete. i think you're the one to tell me that yeah it sucks it's i, I hate That's, that it's disappointing because you have he's such a good fucking actor that I, he can carry some really incredible roles and he's just doing this dumb tv shit that it seems like it's you know phoned in probably Sidebar, watch Boiler Room. If you guys haven't yeah. watched Boiler Room, I mean, it's Vin Diesel, Giovanni Rabishi coming up in their own in like two breakout roles for them. Um, but back to that thing you do. It's a really great story of this band and just like the difficulties of being a band and being young and dealing with success and being on the road um, and, you know, all the pitfalls of that. And it's really well acted. I'm surprised. Um, you know, because the star in this is Tom Tom Everett Scott, and it's like, where did that dude go? I know, where did he go? Yeah, because he was in that um, sequel. Wasn't he in the, the sequel? American Werewolf of yeah. Paris. Yeah, that was like. Yeah. I thought that was like his big uh, follow yeah, up. Yeah, because that's to this. what I remember him from. Absolutely. So yeah, and then he was also Dead Man on Campus. He was. In that oh yeah, yeah, Dead Man on Campus with uh, fucking that other guy from these uh, that was the bodybuilder in Night at the Roxbury. Yeah. And he was, that's who played the asshole, I think, that they were trying to murder the whole time, right? Yeah, and that was kind of like his moment, because this was in 96, and those were in 97, and then not much since then. But man, uh, Dead Man on Campus, that was a good watch. I gotta go back and watch that one. <laughs> I, like, I like what we're doing, that we're recommending movies in and around um, the stuff we're talking about. But yeah, that thing you do, uh, really good date movie, um, just, it hits all the notes. I mean, Tom, it's... Tom Hanks has been starring in these types of movies for decades at this point, so he knows how to make them, and it's got all the charm and fun of a typical Tom Hanks movie, except for, you know, shit like Philadelphia. (laughs) So that's a recommendation. Uh, Moving on, tell us about this film feedback that you have the opportunity to watch and we may get to see in the near future. Uh, Yeah, Uh, so the storyline is about a radio star that lives... The worst night of his life when a stalkers assault uh, when stalkers assault the radio station where he's working. Um, I kind of feel like in an alternate world, if if this guy was less educated, this could have been like what happens to Alex Jones. I hope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but um, so he's kind of a, a political radio analyst, truth speaker of sorts. Gotcha. And. Um, at one point, he, the you know, people get into the radio station and do some pretty sadistic things, kind of force them into um, some confusing situations where it's not just, hey, we're here and we want to do bad shit. It's, hey, we're here and we actually have a detailed oriented plan of why we're here and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, so it, there's some underlying uh, secrets, a couple of twists and turns, and things like that. And the star is a guy you may remember, Eddie Marzan, uh, from uh, End of the World, uh, the Simon Pegg movie. Yeah. Or um, uh, he's World's been in End, yeah. World's End. That's what it was. Yeah, my bad. That's End of the World's fucking the uh, the Seth Rogen one. But yeah, uh, he's been around for quite a while, and I he was really what piqued my interest, and uh, and then also it has Paul Anderson, which if you don't remember him from Peaky Blinders, uh, <laughs> he's fantastic, and I'd like to see him in pretty much another uh, interesting role. So um, as these two people are kind of forced to maintain their radio, uh, their live broadcast, 
and uh, discuss things and secrets from their past, basically, that uh, are revealing as the story develops and pushes further towards its uh, free-for-all climax of craziness. Um, there's some good violence and brutality, and I think that was quite interesting. And the character twists and turns of uh, ye so innocent, yet thou so murderous. I'm just <laughs> using words. I like um, it. <clears throat> that kind of stuff was very interesting. So um, a decent filler watch, better than that fucking movie, The Basement, that I saw. But <laughs> along that same timeline of... Um, a horror thriller with some brutality kind of reminded me a little bit of like the first purge. Okay. A little bit. A little bit. But, uh, a little bit. So just a take it or leave it? I would say take it or leave it, but it's okay to take it. Okay. It always is. Cool. Um, finally, on this segment, the last thing that one of us watched. I don't know how this film snuck by me. Um, Carnage came out in 2011. It's adapted from a play about two pairs of parents hold a cordial meeting after their sons are involved in a fight. And as the time progresses, increasingly childish behavior throws the discussion into chaos. And yeah, it's really hard to talk about the movie besides the description, because that's what it is. Like, it's two sets of parents inside of a house having this conversation, trying to be polite, but slowly um, their real personalities come out after some drinks and just some some stress and trauma. Um, the couples, one is played by Jodie Foster and John C. Riley, So that's cool. And then Kate Winslet and Christoph Waltz are the other couple. So if you're going to have this very isolated, um, you know, stagey type movie, you got to fill it with some great actors. And I mean, that four is pretty fucking powerhouse, dude. And yeah, it, no, I agree. I feel like I saw a trailer for this and then never watched it either. Yeah, it's, it's crazy because like I love all these people and yeah. it's a great job of getting them together and some great chemistry between them. Um, it's another short watch. It's only an hour and 20 minutes, so they don't try to make more out of it than it needs to be. And it is very dark comedy with a little bit of drama. So if that's your style, um, it's an employee pick for me just because th- you get these four actors together is an achievement in itself. And, and the script does not disappoint. It's very entertaining. And I think this would be funny because if you you know when you're flipping through movies that like back in the day at a video store and then you see the side of the title and you're like carnage. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, and you're looking for like a movie that's fucked up and you. You pull that, and you're just like, oh, yeah, I'll, t- I'll totally watch Carnage, and then it's not what you think. That, it's, it's, a good, it's a good misleading. Middle-aged but, white people know. complaining right. to each other. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, yeah. yeah, this is some serious Carnage right here. Yeah. But yeah I really, no, I, he woke up with a headache. I really dug it, man. I think it's, uh, no, I got you. it's a good one, and that one's on Amazon Prime. Carnage, John C. Riley, Kate Winslet. Yeah. Um, on to the final segment of the show, WTW, a.k.a. What to Watch This Week. And since we've been behind, this is a catch-up week. This is everything that we... Catch-up and mustard. Yeah, for the second half of June. So next episode, we'll be bringing July What to Watch This Week. To your fucking door. To your fucking door. To your ears. Um, over on to Netflix. your ear doors. We'll start with Netflix because that's the one most people have. Uh, we have a film called Beats. It's about a young, talented guy who suffers from the loss of his sister. He meets a disoriented manager who's trying to get back on track in his musical career. Uh, <laughs> you done? You done? No, um, I was just going to do it the whole time. Anthony Anderson is involved in this um, and some young actors that I'm not super familiar with, but I thought it was interesting enough plot. And it is a Netflix exclusive original movie, so I like to highlight those. Um, also on the Netflix is a documentary called The Edge of Democracy. The Edge of Democracy. Political document- documentary and personal memoir collide in this exploration into the complex truth behind the unraveling of two Brazilian presidencies. So uh, my guess is you'll see some um, some fucked up shit some fucked up shit but also some similarities between what's going on in Brazil and in our country the United States also both of our presidents are brown they're they're yeah something 
That, <laughs> what? <laughs> um, there's also a bunch of Neon Genesis um, stuff. I don't know if you're familiar with the anime. I've always heard things about it, but the series and all their movies have come to Netflix. <laughs> and it's exciting because it's one of those things people have warned me, like, I don't know, man, this one's a little too much. I don't know if you'll dig it. it it's too, too anime. The guy has a robot bunny that fucking attacks people and murders and eats them and then turns them into fertilizer. I don't know if you're kidding or if that's really what this is about. I have no idea, but that sounds good, right? Yeah. So whenever people warn me, like, oh, I don't know if you'll be able to take this. It might be too much of stomach. I'm like, all right, I need to fucking see this. So, Dude, her vagina opens up into a Megatron and attacks the world's sun. What? Yep. Um, <laughs> finally, on the Netflix, it is probably the biggest debut of the entire month. Uh, yes. S- what a good choice. Yes. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, one of the best... Um, One of the best animated movies and action movies. Like, it's honestly, it's it's hard to fa- fault it, my friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just one of the best movies of the entire year. It's so much fun. It's a celebration of everything Spider-Man in the way Lego Batman was, but this is all better movie. Like, it's just a really good movie. You could, mm-hmm. this would be a great introduction to Spider-Man, um, but it's also like a crowning achievement, like a victory lap for people that love Spider-Man, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think uh, that's a good way to put it, that uh, if you don't know anything about Spider-Man, you can still totally enjoy this movie. And also, if you're a big fan, I'm a big fan of the people that created it. Uh, it's the team of Phil Lord and, um, Lord and Phil Miller. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, it's Phil what was it? Lord and Phil Taylor. Miller. <laughs> Phil Lord yes. and and um what? I know uh, I can't think of his No, I can't think of his other. His I think it's name. Chris Miller. Yeah. Lord, we'll say Lord and Miller. We do but know. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're great. They created Clone High, one of my favorite shows ever. Yes. They are fucking geniuses. So, um yeah, if you haven't seen this yet, see it. And if you have seen it, you know it's good and you're going to want to watch it again. You know, I was looking on Netflix at it, the and I put it on as something to fall asleep to yesterday just because it was, you know, I've seen it. Uh-huh. But um, it looks like you may be able to watch it with 3D glasses or something. I'm not sure if that's possible, but it seems like parts of it are still shot in that format where maybe I should throw on some 3D glasses and see if something happens. That's dope. Yeah, if you missed out in theaters, you, you suck because it was a very good 3D movie. Ah. Yeah. If I could suck. Okay. Um, over on Hulu, we have uh, Juliet Naked, which is also on Amazon Prime. There's going to be a couple of these. This one, as I accidentally delete the uh, link to it, <laughs> stars Chris O'Dowd, Rose Byrne, and Chris O'Dowd. Yeah. And um, fuck, who's, I like him. Who's the guy that like Ethan Hawke? So who's uh, that guy that's in all those movies I like? Ah. It's story Annie, of like a- Annie, who's a long-suffering girlfriend of Duncan. So Rose Byrne, long-suffering girlfriend of Chris O'Dowd's character, and her unlikely transatlantic romance with the once revered, now faded singer slash songwriter Tucker Crow, who's played by e- played by Ethan Hawke. And <laughs> wait, stop! Yeah, Ethan Hawke plays a guy that also has a bird for his last name. Yeah. <laughs> Ethan Hawke plays Tucker Crow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That is a good catch. Yeah, it's like if you were going to make fun of him, fuck you, Tucker Crow. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's literally the same name, just yeah. slightly different. Fuck That's you, great. Chad Pigeon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, but so this guy happens to be the subject of the husband's obsession. Like, he's obsessed with this singer songwriter and, you know, his wife, and they're having a rocky marriage, just falling in love with him. So it's like a love triangle. Going all directions. Maybe Ethan Hawke doesn't want to fuck both of them, but like you know, it's it's complicated. It does. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the three leads, so this is on my short list of like romantic comedies that I would actually watch. Looks pretty okay. interesting. Yeah, no, I do like Chris O'Dowd. He's big. He's just hilarious if you put him in the right stuff. I haven't really found too much that he's not funny, and even if the movie sucks, he's still funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's also this drama called Diane that I've heard good things about Diane. Um, on uh, Prime. It's or I'm sorry, we're on Hulu. It's uh, she feel the Diane fills her days helping others and desperately attempting to bond with her drug addicted son. As these pieces of her existence begin to fade, she finds herself confronting memories she'd sooner forget than face. So very but, heavy drama. Yeah, way to rush her like entire emotional journey. No, <laughs> yeah. Just, Oh. So if you're, you know, in the mood for a good cry or gut punch, um, I've heard good things about that one, Diane. It'll punch you in the dick. Yeah. 
And if you don't, if you're going to the opposite direction on Hulu and also on Prime, The Spy Who Dumped Me. I think Mila you Kunis. you watched this, right? I did. I've yet to see it. Um, probably going to check decent. it out. Yeah. Mila Kunis and also Kate McKinnon, two of my and favorites. And Justin Thoreau. Fuck you. You better yeah. mention his name. Yep. This is about the best friends, Audrey and Morgan. And they become entangled in an international conspiracy when one of the women discovers that the boyfriend who dumped her was actually a spy. If the title didn't tell you that, yeah. you know, that's basically the plot. Yeah, no, this isn't for uh, people that get uh, seven levels of Inception on. It's just a fun watch with uh, some really funny people. Yep. If you want to just kind of turn your brain off and have fun and watch two great actresses, I would recommend that one. Yeah. On the home box office, we have Wig, which is a uh, documentary about Wigstock, an annual drag fest that glamorously signaled the end of summer for a gay community in New York City for almost 20 years. And um, there's more Whoa. to it than that, but I don't want to. It's, it's got one of those summaries that kind of give away what it is. But um, again, this documentary comes highly regarded. It looks very interesting. Do and the wigs come to life and attack the people and eat them? No. But, uh, yeah, ah. a good way to end Pride Month. Maybe they could have put it out a little sooner, but let's not forget that it is Pride Month. Um, another, like, good, easy watch on HBO is The Old Man and the Gun. I talked about this one a couple episodes back. Um, maybe could be Robert Redford's last film. He plays the title character. They've been saying that for years. Yeah. Uh, based on a true story of this character, Forrest Tucker, and his escape from the San Quentin prison at the age of 70, and then a string of heists that followed that. Um, it's kind of a catch me if you can with, you know, an older guy. He's really good in it. Casey Affleck actually plays a character that's not like terminally fucking depressed and dark. He plays like a normal human being for once. And uh, Sissy Spacek, Danny Glover are also really good in it. So nothing great, but again, if you're looking for something, you know, light, feel good movie. That's what this is. I do want to watch that. And, uh, yeah, Casey Affleck either plays, like, super depressed people or, like, detectives that won't take no shit. He's a detective, but he's kind of, like, just a a regular guy. Yeah, he's just a regular guy. Mm -hmm. Um, And then finally on HBO, we have Robin Hood, the 2018 version. Um, I heard this is in the So Bad It's Good pantheon. Like, think Venom, think... uh, Gotti. So I'm still interested in seeing this. You got your boy Taryn Edgerton. Jamie mm-hmm. Foxx is in this. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a over the top action version of Robin Hood. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's a popcorn flick. I'll tell you that. Definitely doesn't do any justice to the Robin Hood story. They could have just said like uh, medieval thoughtful guy gives back to people. <laughs> Yeah, but Robin Hood, that's the thing. Robin Hood is uh, public domain, so anyone can make a Robin Hood movie. And yeah, it I, seems I, like well, they are. You know, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, that's int- uh, I guess anyone can make a Don Quixote movie, too, right? There's a couple of them. I think even like King Kong and Godzilla, you can do that as well. I can make a Godzilla movie? Let's do it, man. What you doing next weekend? Hey. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. You're hired. You're fucking hired. Um, <laughs> in theaters uh, this last weekend of June is... I'm so confused by this series. Annabelle Comes Home. Um, this Tell is Tell Annabelle to stay the fuck home and yeah. don't go to the theater anymore because we're over your fucking series. This is related to Insidious, right? I feel like... Yeah, or no, uh, Conjuring. No, no the, conjuring the Conjuring. Yeah, God. I, which I went and I, I saw The Conjuring. The only reason I saw it is because hands came out and clapped. And uh-huh. I was literally the one scene. I was like, I want to see what happens for that. And then when I rewatched that scene, it turns out those are man hands. And they're not even the hands of like what's supposed to be like the dead little girl or some shit. They're like giant man hands. And I was like, that's weird. Dude, there. So in I just looked up the Conjuring um, universe, right? So yeah, there's the An- Annabelle series. There's a couple of those. There's The Nun. There's The Curse of La Llorona, which also came out yeah. this year. Well, uh, which was stupid, too. There's like so there's three Annabelle movies, three Conjuring movies. Well, there's a third one coming out. Then there's who something made called this dumb weak sauce universe. Um, come on, dude, you know who it is. It's a fucking Blumhouse, but I mean they that's what they do. They create they did the purge, they did this, like they they build franchises, and that's cool. I mean, no one else is making original horror franchises, so this is the best we have to deal with right now. As far as it yeah. comes like and you know, they put out the Jordan Peele movies, so I'm not gonna hate them. Okay, yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, someone needs to do this. I will take this if I get that. Yeah. Um, Also in theaters is yesterday. That's the uh, Danny Boyle movie about a young man who is the only one to remember the Beatles song. So he starts to perform as if they were his. Right. Yeah. Right. 
Yep. Uh, hey, dude. <laughs> yeah. I heard it was good. I heard it's a very it's a romantic comedy. It's a date movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't fill out my speed round, and neither did you, so we'll save that for next week. Oh, we could just do a random one where I just shout random movie titles, and then you tell me what you think of <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I woke up early today, man. I'm like I'm like in a tired haze all day. I like got up at seven for some reason, so it's a late late afternoon for me. It feels mm. later than it is. But uh, yeah, man. Anything you think you're going to watch, you can tell people to look forward to next week. Well, the two of you that are still listening at this point. Yeah, thank you. How's it going, guys? Mm, hey, how are you? What are you up to? What are you doing? Um, no, nothing in particular. There's some stuff that is coming out soon that I'm ex- I'm looking forward to as far as the series, The Boys. Um, there, yeah, I'm I'm so bad at like scheduling out what I'm watching. I'm so impulsy. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, dude. Um, I will tell you, I want to catch Child's Play. I want to catch Toy Story 4. Um, Got and, a friend in me. And then we'll be talking, hopefully, uh, yeah, next time we do this, it'll be pretty close. It depends on when we record next week. Um, Spider-Man. Got a friend in me. I'm looking forward to Spider-Man Far From Home. And then Midsommar is like, Midsommar and Once Upon a Time in um, Hollywood, Hollywood are my yeah. two most anticipated movies until Star Wars. And Midsommar comes out next week, July 3rd. So... Um, mm. I'm gonna want, I'm gonna see that as soon as possible. So there's there's a lot of good stuff. On it's the horizon. all happening. It's things all are, happening. We're in the middle. Are happening. We're in the beginning of the summer, but we're in the middle of the summer movies because they always start early. Ready and finger snap. Thanks for listening, especially if you got this far, and we will talk to you next week. Blue. It's over. Go home. Go.